let's continue with the statistical test and in this class we'll talk about the F test. First thing we need to understand what is the use of the F test. F test is going to be used to compare two methods. Let's say for example you are developing a new medicine and you want to compare with a method that is already there to see if what you are doing is all right. So let's say here you have got method one, which is let's say our method that we are trying to develop. And then you also have method two, which is the standard. So you want to compare what you are doing with, your st with the standard method. So for these two methods, what you want to do is calculate the variance of the first method you no know, variance is the square right of the standard deviation so this will be variance one squared and then also the second variance also square it and what you want to do is now to find the, the f value using these two and you call that as f calculated and that will be given by you getting the first variance you square you divide by the second variance it's not a mandate that the first one should always be divided by the second one this is only when the one that is on top is bigger should be greater than the one that is down so this is the principle now remember as we talked about uh, let this symbol not really confuse you as we did talk about the in the g class the G test class, we said when you're dealing with a sample and a population, you are going to be using different letters. For samples, we use English letters, like for example, the standard deviation you use S for a sample and then Sigma for a population. And then again, for sample, we are going to use this S squared for the variance, right? And then sigma squared for a population. So depending with what you are dealing with, if you are dealing with a sample a population, please use the right thing. And again, we said for variance for a sample is going to be given by the sum of each value, you remove the mean. And the mean for a sample you use this x with a bar on top and then you are going to divide by n minus one but this st the variance for a population you get the summation of the terms and the mean here we use mu you remove mu you square that even here you square and then instead of dividing by n minus one just divide by n so you can see the difference the formula is basically the same, but for population, you use n down. For sample, you use n minus 1. You can see the mean we use that. x with a bar, mean for a population, we use this. And for most of the calculations you'll be dealing with in statistics, you use it for a sample. Unless they have specifically told you it was a population, that's when you use for the population. So even here we have put F calculated being sigma 1 squared over sigma 2 squared. If it is a sample, we are going to put S1 squared over S2 squared. Where in this case S1 squared is going to be bigger than S2 because the S1 is the one on top. Hope that is okay. So we have got a question here for practice. You are developing a new calorimetric procedure for determining the glucose content of blood serum. You have chosen the standard falling wall procedure with which to compare your results. Determine whether your method differs significantly from that of the standard method at 95% confidence. So now we know also the confidence at which we are working with. So how can we go about this method? We want to find first the variances, the variance for the first one and the variance for the second one. So before you can find the variance, you want to find the mean. And in this case, remember, as long as it's not specified that it is a population you use for a sample, because you normally don't work with populations and statistics. Populations are time consuming and they are resource consuming because you are dealing with a lot of values. Therefore, I'm going to use for a sample. You can see mean I'm using X with a bar. And mean is given by the summation 
of all the terms divided by how many they are. And in this case, we are going to use this as the first method. This will be the second method. So this will be x, the first mean for the first method. So we're going to get 127 plus 125 plus 123 plus 130 plus 131 plus 126 and then plus 129 divide everything by how many they are so how many are these one two three four five six seven so we are dividing that by a seven if you calculate this you are going to get 127 as the mean and then we find the variance variance s squared we already wrote the formula that is given by the sum we get the first value 127 this is 127 right so we get the first value which is 127 and what we are doing is we are removing the mean which is also 127 we square that we go to the second one 125 minus 127 which is the mean square that go to the third one which is 123 minus 127 also square that go to the third one which is 130 minus 127 square that go to the next one 120 okay that is 131 first minus 127 square that the next one is 126 minus 127 square that and then the last one is 129 minus 127 we also square that and then remember because this is a sample we divide by n minus 1 not by n so this is the terms are 7 minus 1 that would be a 6 right and when you punch this on the calculator it is going to give 8.3 that will be the variance. We'll go to the second method. We find the mean. So sigma 2. This is remember 1. Sigma 2 is going to be equal to. We add the terms. 130 plus 128 plus 131 plus 129 plus 127 plus 125. And then divide by how many they are. These are 6. And this is going to give us 128. Come and find the variance. S is squared, and this is the second variance. The first term is 130. Subtract 128. Square that. The second one is 128. Subtract 128. Square that. The third one is 131 subtract 128 and square the third one is 129 subtract 128 square third one is 127 minus 128 square and the last one is 125 minus 128 square supposed to divide everything here by n minus 1. So these terms were 6. If you subtract 1, there will be 5. So I'm dividing by 5. And when you punch that, you are going to find that S2 squared is going to give us 4.8. So don't forget what we found as S1. Let me just get to it. It's 8.3. So S1 squared is 8.3. So we want to find F calculated. Remember we said for to find F calculated, the bigger one should always be on top. So in this case, it's going to be S1 squared over S2 squared. And this is going to be 8.3 divided by 
4.8 and that will be giving us 1.73. So the next thing we want to determine F tabulated. So we're supposed to go on the F test table to find the F tabulated. To find F tabulated, the first thing we want to find is V1. So these are degrees of freedom, right? So V1 is going to be equal to what? So look at the values. This is our one, isn't it? First variance. And the first variance, how many numbers did we have? The first variance, we found it from seven numbers. So seven minus one is going to give us six. That's how we find degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus one. And then we also find V2. V2 came from the second variance. And the second variance came from which terms? It's these, right? And how many were they? They were six. So 6 minus 1, that will give us a 5. And we are dealing at what? 95% confidence. So going on the table here, V1 is 6, V2 is 5, and this table is already at 95% confidence. So we are saying V1 is 6. You can see V1 is this side. That is 6. V2 is a 5. The value we are getting there, that's a 4.95, isn't it? So we are going to put 4.95. So compare F calculated and F tabulated. So F calculated, you can see, is way less than F tabulated. So the question was saying, Determine whether your method differs significantly. Every time what you have calculated is more than what is on the table, it means that there is no significant difference, right? So since F calculated is smaller than F tabulated, there is no significant difference between the two methods. So our method is actually fine. We can accept it. So that is it with this class. Thank you so much for watching. In the next class, we'll talk about the t-test and how we use it in statistics. Please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Stay blessed.